Hey there, welcome to a brand new episode of Music Express. My name is Twan and in this week's vlog you will see my interview with Kai Tresset about his classic Your Own Reality. But before we start with the interview, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and very important, also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. Alright, here it is, the story behind Your Own Reality, my interview with Kai Tresset. Enjoy! Kai Tresset is a project from German DJ and producer Kai McDonald. In the year 1996, he released the very first Kai Tresset track, which was the single So Simple. During the years, he had a lot of success with tracks such as Life is Too Short, For Just One Day, Trance and Acid, Liquid Skies, and his 1997 release Your Own Reality. And that one became his breakthrough single in his home country, Germany. I recently sat down with Kai in his beautiful studio to ask him about three of his classics. So make sure to keep an eye on my channel, since besides this one there will be two more interviews in the near future. In this week's vlog you will hear the story behind the Kai Tresset classic, your own reality and more. My first question to Kai was, how old he was when he became interested in music? Uh, very young, uh, as a little kid I was a huge uh, Elvis Presley fan. So I was okay. looking all the movies and also I got these little records, you remember the small ones? Mm -hmm. And I was buying them from a little shop uh, used and I was like, oh, Elvis is the king. This, so it, actually it was my dream to become the second Elvis mm -hmm. Presley. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, around what time did you start uh, making music yourself? Um, with the hip hop, uh, when hip hop was rising, uh, I was starting to to find my way into the hip hop scene. So I was doing graffitis. I was uh, also was trying to rap, and of course, um, at this shitty turntable, I was trying to scratch with. And so I was, yeah. Okay. So uh, did you have any music lessons? Um, the, the problem was in the school when I was uh, in the, the, the singing class, uh, my teacher was always telling me, no, Kai, can you please stop singing with everyone else because you're destroying everything and <laughs> if you keep singing I will give you a very bad uh, note at the end of the year. So I was okay, okay, I don't sing. So. Uh, and then I was, I remember I was trying to learn the guitar because of Elvis Presley. And the problem was that my guitar music trainer, he was saying, okay, can you sing the note? And I say, no, I can't sing the note. So <laughs> it was like, I don't know, for like three weeks or four weeks and then I stopped it. So no, no musical training. Okay. Do you, do you remember your very first release ever? Yeah, of course. Uh, it was uh, Via Via. Um, uh, Words of Wisdom on uh, Acid Tracks, 1995. Okay. Oh, so that's uh, 25, no? Yeah, 95. 25 years ago now. 25 years ago. Oh, you're 25 years in the and music business. <laughs> yeah, at the same time, uh, also, I did the remix for Frank Farian for La Bush, uh, Be My Lover. Yeah. And that became a worldwide hit. That became a worldwide hit, yes. Yeah, yeah you told me, I, I never knew, but you also used to work with Frank Farley yes, quite yes, a lot. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And before that, I had a lot of demos. I went to a lot of people. And um, it was always funny because they say, hmm, it's like a little bit like techno music, but it also have a commercial part inside. So um, I don't know if you want to if you want to use it. So. so there was a lot of people who was interested in, into me, also from the underground scene and also from the more commercial scene. And uh, yeah, they all have this own thought, but why they don't want to work with me. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I came up with this one guy who said, hey, I want to uh, start a label, a techno label. And he said, do you want to be my first artist? And I said, yes, let's do this. So I was the first record on this uh, label and it was also my first record. Okay. And at the same time, as we're talking about, uh, the other guy came to me, Uli Brenner, who was the resident DJ, where I also uh, always testing my stuff and say, hey, can you do a remix of this song? So oh, it's a pretty nice song. Yeah, of course I can do it. And this was this worldwide hit, uh, La Bouche Be My Lover. Yeah. Oh, wow, cool. So uh, in 1996, you started to release music under the name Kai Tresset. 
the first release that came out under this name uh, was a track so simple uh, but you really became more well known with your uh, track uh, your own reality which came out one year later uh, do you still remember something from the production process of your own reality yes Yes, yes. Uh, your own reality, I did it at um, Lane's basement. Lane is the singer of La Bouche. Because um, before I was in my uh, kinder room, my children room, and then I went to study electronics. So I went with my whole studio to the uh, basement of the facility where I study, because I have agreement with the uh, with the guy who's uh, what is the facility you know what yeah, facility facility guy and he say yeah you can use this room in the basement but then they have a water problem with there so the whole uh, room was full of water so i have to take all my stuff out and uh, i asked lane from la bush if uh, if you know something or, or i don't remember how it comes but he said hey you can come to my basement and make your studio there so i went with all my stuff into his basement and uh, started to producing there again and uh, yeah this then the idea from uh, your own reality came and uh, uh, I said, hey, Lane, I need somebody who's uh, telling the, 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 the lyrics, but because I was, I don't want to talk anymore. And because I was talking to So Simple and, and a lot of other tracks, and I was like, oh, my voice is horrible. I need this beautiful angel voice of a girl. And he said, yeah, I have a dancer. He can uh, came up and uh, put the lyrics in you. For, so, so it was actually a dancer of La Bush who oh. <laughs> uh, who uh, made the uh, lyrics for Young Reality. Okay. Yes. Yeah, there's actually two two vocalists in the track, right? Yes. Then um, I was always uh, singing. Ah, it's a good song. Maybe I need a, a singing part also inside. So and I know this singer. He's for she's from uh, this area here, and uh, I asked her if she can sing. So, and, and then later we released it on uh, Tala's label, Suck Me Plasma, and it went very well. And uh, then uh, Mark Spoon came to me and said, hey, you uh, owe me everything because I was playing this track in Ibiza and make it big. And <laughs> so um, he said, uh, if you ever become a DJ, you have to come in my booking agency. I said, okay, I will do this. And um, then uh, Tala uh, sold uh, two, three tracks to, uh, to Sony Music as a package. And it was um, Timo Maas, Taucha and Tala and Kai Tresset. So it did Triple T. And, uh, and then Sony Music was like, okay, we will take one of these free track and we make this uh, huge. Mm -hmm. And we make a video and everything. And then luckily they took uh, the Kai Tresset one. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, good for you. <laughs> yeah, very good. So uh, what kind of equipment was used for the track? Um, uh, I can show it to you, I still have it. Okay. <laughs> in, in, in the storage room. Um, it's a Yamaha A1X, I think, or a C, CSX1 or something like this, uh, for the strings. And, and a Roland uh, J, JV1080, I guess, for uh, the, uh, the melody. Mm -hmm. uh, the reverb was uh, Sony. RB7, I guess, was the name for it. And uh, TB3 free, of course. Of course, course. yes, of course. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's the main, main yeah. thing. And, it, and assembler, and I think it was an Emu assembler because I don't have the money for Akai assemblers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were quite expensive, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, how long did it take you to finish the track? Uh, a couple of months. Yes. Okay. Oh, so pr pretty long. Yeah, yes. Uh, most most of the track I do, uh, uh, they take a lot of yeah. time because um, you're working on it, and then you say no, it's not good, and then you have another idea and another idea, and uh, usually for me it's like um, when I found a point when I say, oh, okay, this is something I I get. Uh, mm -hmm. 
skinny, what is this called? Goosebumps. Goosebumps? Yeah. Then I will take it. And then I also take uh, all the other parts where I w was working on and say, okay, maybe this part will fit into it. And ah, I remember I have this uh, crazy free free line. Yeah, maybe I can take this. And uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, so your own reality made it to the number 22 position on the German charts. Uh, were you surprised by the success of the track? Uh, this was amazing. I mean, before it was like just records and I was super proud of it. And I was always the guy in the club in the corner and was like, wow, they're playing my track again. Wow, this is amazing. <laughs> and see the people like it, wow. And uh, but then with uh, with uh, your, your own reality, it was like TV shows and radio shows, and Planet Radio, which is still a big uh, radio uh, uh, station station here in Germany. Uh, they was like, oh, we are supporting your track so much. They, they give me a picture with all the plays of your own reality, and um, yeah, and it was everything was so new, you know. Mm -hmm. I have to go to TV shows, yes, and I have to uh, make pictures. So I went to a photographer. And also we did the video mm -hmm. with, um, he's a famous guy, uh, Frank De Wolf. Oh yeah, 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 from yeah. Belgium, yeah. Yeah, from Belgium. And uh, so there's also a funny story if you want to hear it. Yeah, of course. And so I went with, uh, with the train to uh, Belgium for the video. Because of course, uh, making videos was very expensive at this time and uh, we don't have much money for it. So I said, go by train, okay? Yes, of course I go by train. And I went there and Frank had this uh, nice idea to do in the video. It's still on, on YouTube, you mm -hmm. can find it. And and um, so he, he said to the uh, makeup artist, uh, make his uh, face a little bit like he's sweating a little bit, but not only a little bit. So the makeup artist was like, okay, let's put on some a baby oil on his face. <laughs> so I have this glowing face. And I came back and Frank was like, oh my God, what happening? And uh, she said, oh, no problem. I couldn't do it away. So she take a tissue and make, <laughs> and start doing this and you, so just to explain to you, a little, I'm a little bit like Sheldon. Mm -hmm. So if somebody drinks from a glass, I would never touch yeah. the glass again and mm -hmm. drink again. <laughs> yeah. Even my wife drinking from a glass was no, no, I take another water or maybe a water later. Maybe later I get water. So, uh, and, and I was like, okay, this is your first video, Kai. Mm -hmm. You have to go through this. Don't fuck it up. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we can do the video now, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Yeah, but, but you were happy with the results? Yeah, I mean, this was my first video yeah. and there was a free or free inside and was like, yes, yeah. I made it. <laughs> yeah. then we put the free or free inside and, uh, and uh, I mean, this was totally different than what we have in today. Yeah. It was like, I don't, I don't remember correctly, but we was entrance into the charts like, 98 or something and then over the weeks it goes up mm -hmm. a little bit you know it's uh, today it's just start at the highest point mo yeah. mostly and then it's falling mm -hmm. down yeah so it was natural growing yeah yeah it was and like really yeah building up yeah to the to building the, to up the top, yes yeah. and uh yeah it was so I assume it was also the first time you had a chart hit? Yes, was for, yeah, I mean, with Be My Lover, but uh, I was not uh, getting any attention yeah. for it, yes. Yeah. I did only the remix, mm -hmm. yeah, but uh, with this, it was totally crazy. And people recognized me and uh, my my video was playing on Viva and MT, uh, MTV, which was huge at this time. It was this media everybody was watching for, for videos, uh, for, for music mm -hmm. stuff. So I was like, wow, that's amazing. And I remember we went to uh, MTV in London and uh, for the first time playing your own reality video. And they was thinking about, oh, this break in the middle without music is shitty. So they cut out the middle part, which was for me the most important part of the song. So I did the interview and after the interview, they, they played the track and I said, what the fuck are you doing? You're cutting the song in the middle. It's the most important part of the song. <laughs> but 
yeah it's uh, what what happening yeah. is cuz uh, yeah people don't understand techno music at this time yeah yeah it was still like new it was brand new yeah. yes yeah so uh, since this was your first chart hit um, how important has your own reality been for your career i, I think this was uh, the uh, the the fire gun yeah. the starting uh, shot yeah it's 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 the most important thing yes yeah. of course so you had a lot of other very famous tracks uh, which we will talk about in the next interview uh, but in the year 2009 you did st uh, stop with making music all of a sudden uh, why was that yeah because um, one reason was um, there was uh, this it was I think I was already in 2004 2005 I was uh, on on tour in Australia with uh, I think it was Armin van Buren, it was Steve uh, Angelo, it was, I think David Guetta was there, Toka Disco, I don't remember, maybe something is wrong. And um, so I hear it, uh, Steve Angelo, he, he was just, uh, he was the, uh, he was already big, but he was also, uh, was, also at the starting point a little bit mm -hmm. he was already big but he was not like yeah super huge uh, as uh, same as uh, David Gutter yeah. and um, and they say wow Steve Andrew he's playing the song I tracks I like like Tressa tracks like 10 BPM uh, lower mm -hmm. and um, and then I would play with Armin together and uh, he, nothing against Armin, but I was like, oh, I don't want to play anymore in a trance tent because it's, it's getting a little bit boring for mm -hmm. me to do the same tracks always uh, again. So I had a lot of discussion with, uh, with uh, Armin, uh, Jona, who I do uh, trust tracks together at this time with my booking agency and I was saying, guys, I want to change my sound a little bit. And, um, and say no, no, no! Do the same stuff. We're doing a lot of money with you now. So <laughs> all this stuff came in together, you know. And then I was deciding, okay, let's stop this. Yes, yeah. I was not happy about it. Yeah. I have this very good friend, Rachel. She's doing my uh, booking stuff uh, for Switzerland uh, exclusively for like, I don't know, 25 years. And she was saying, okay, Kai, are you still happy with this? I said, no. So why don't you stop it just? And I said, okay, let's, let's Take do a break. break. Yes. Yeah. So uh, what did you do uh, when, you, when you were uh, having a break? I was thinking about, okay, let's start a new career. Let's uh, become a yoga teacher or do something else, a uh, photographer or painter. And I was trying a lot of stuff. And um, and I I don't know how to explain, but um, I want to uh, give myself um, the confidence that I can do something else mm -hmm. and start something else, and it and that I'm able to uh, be successful in something else. Yeah, and with my own power without the luck or Sony music or Tala who bring it there. So, because uh, as an artist, um, I know there are a lot of people with a lot of self-confidence, but I'm always the guy with very low self-confidence. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you see my gigs on YouTube, you will find out uh, most of the time when I go on stage, the first 10, 15 minutes, I'm like this. Mm -hmm. Are they interested in my music? <laughs> and um, so yeah, I was just want to prove myself that I can do something else. Mm -hmm. But the problem was uh, also with yoga. Uh, so I did some yoga stuff, and then I did some uh, late night parties with uh, yoga, where I play tracks and also given a class. And the, the clever um, owner of the yoga studio, she was like, oh, I know he's Kai Tresset. So he put on the tickets, Kai Tresset tonight in our yoga facility. <laughs> and say, why did you, you just use my real name? I'm here as a yoga teacher. If you want to book me as Kai Tresset, you have to pay a lot of more money than just like 10 euros, you know? <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, the Kai Tressa stuff always come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's okay. the story. 
So uh, when you started to make music again, uh, was it hard for you to learn everything again, or did you still have like your old setup? I still have my old uh, setup, as you see, because uh, I learned with this stuff. I don't. S to, uh, say that it, that's better. A better way, I think, is more. It's 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 actually a harder way because you you have a lot of more troubles like uh, MIDI timing or noises from the cables or all this stuff. But um, yeah, that's that's where I started. Yeah, and I still have the equipment, and I always want to uh, have my own sound. And that's what a lot of people are uh, telling me. I was just speaking with uh, Thomas Schumacher, mm -hmm. who is a very uh, successful techno producer. And he was like, mm, yeah, it's not 100% my top of uh, uh, my cup of tea, your music, but I really like that you have your own sound created and that you just doing the stuff that you like and I have a lot of respect for you mm -hmm. for this. So, and uh, this is what uh, over the years a lot of people telling me, uh, say, yeah, I recognize, when you play a track, I recognize this, this is from yeah. Guy Tresset. So, and then I realized maybe this is my superpower and I, I should keep using it. Mm -hmm. So this is why I'm using the whole, uh, whole equipment. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, actually, um, and, and the stage where I was trying to find myself, I was reading a lot of comments on Discord. And so there was one comment was like, so uh, it has to be like, I don't know, end of the 90s, beginning of 2000. And one guy saying, yeah, Kytrex is not involving anymore. Everybody's using now the uh, JPE, um, uh, what was it uh, from Roland? Uh, they rebuilt the Jupiter 8, mm -hmm. JP 8000, 8, yes, and uh, make this uh, super sound uh, using the sounds. But Kai Tresen still using his old school sounds. And um, then I realized, together with uh, the stuff uh, people saying, hey, Kai, but he got his own sound. Yeah, and uh, maybe it was like, hmm, because I have the, uh, the Jupiter 8000 from, from Roland, but I was never using the Superstar sound. <laughs> <laughs> and I never found it for me. And also, I, I know at this time the Scott Project and all the other guys using uh, uh, the XX Virus and the Nord Lead. And I bought it, of course because I want to have toys, but I never use it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and nowadays I find out maybe I just have to stick to my synthesizers, who I was, uh, who was talking to me. And because uh, then I have to still have my sound. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's a sound that people, uh, yeah, yeah, fans uh, love you for, yes, yeah. Yes. So uh, earlier this year, you released a track uh, on the Oliver Heldens label, Hell Deep. Uh, you did a collab with Mogwai, and the result of that collab was the track uh, DT64. Uh, I believe there's a cool, cool story behind the name uh, DT64 as well, right? So uh, there's a cool story about the whole track. <laughs> but uh, with DT64, I mean DT64, it's it's the idea of Mogwai. So he came up with the name and say, okay. And he he also got a story about it. But um, I think it's better to ask him because mm -hmm. it was his idea. And yeah, the, the story about the song is uh, I met uh, Mokwa, we were playing together in Poland on a huge rave and uh, he was playing a, a track and was like, ah, you got really cool beats and everything. And I say, hey, we have to do a track together. Let me put some acid and then you put some beats inside and then we make a huge track. And um, he said, yeah, it's a great idea. And I was like, okay, he will never uh, call me back. But actually he did. And uh, so we started a little bit and I sent over uh, some uh, free or free lines. And there was one line he was like, fell in totally in love into it. Uh, it was the line which was the beginning uh, uh, of uh, DT64 in, in the first uh, couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, they made a playback for it. 
And I said, yeah, hmm. Yeah, I like this one sequence in the middle, <laughs> which was uh, the uh, type of piano uh, thing, but the, sh the rest is shitty, I don't like it. <laughs> and it was like, what the fuck, <laughs> we're working like a couple of weeks over it. I said, no, I don't get it. <laughs> and so we had a little bit of struggle and fight, and then they say, okay, let's just do whatever you want with it. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, I took uh, the piano line, and I started from scratch for DT64. And um, then uh, we were also at a part where we uh, are sending the tracks. And I really have to say that uh, Mogwai, he's very, very good in uh, motivating people. He was always say, yeah, Tai, go again. It's very, very good. You, you close to 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 be. This will be amazing track. He was never like, oh no, this is shitty guy. Mm -hmm. So, it, like I am. <laughs> and um, then we have a track. It was type of finished. And uh, so Heldy was uh, uh, and uh, he sold it also to Heldy, to Oliver. And Oliver said, say, yeah, it's amazing track. Let's do this. And uh, all the, also the crew from Hell Deep, we say, yeah, let's, it's a techno track, but we will do this. We like the track. So uh, I was very surprised about it. And then I played uh, in the States on uh, Dream, State? With Dream State. And I was thinking, ah, oh, the break could be better. <laughs> so, so if you want to see it, it's still on my Instagram. Um, where I played the track. And uh, so I went back from the States to Germany and say, hey guys, listen, I have to redo the track. The break is not good enough. And they always like, what the fuck? We already paid for mastering and everything. And I say, who, who, who else need mastering? I can do a mastering myself, but I have to change the part, the middle part. And I say, okay, whatever you do, we stop everything. And because it should be released in December. So they stopped everything and I went back to the studio and I came up with the, with the new idea with the slow down free or free before the break and then the new free or free part after the break. And I send it back and say, yeah. We like it, let's do this, finally! <laughs> and Oli was like, he had some, I don't know, four or five versions now and he don't know which was the last one. <laughs> and But he liked it and then we released it, yeah. yes. How oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, it's a very, very good story. And uh, again, I have to really say thank you to Magwai because I was always like, yeah, motivating me and uh, mm -hmm. give me more self-confidence yeah. to do this. and. Um, so I believe even uh, David Guetta requested a copy of the track, right? This was amazing. This was amazing. And then the other day, I, I have to say uh, thank you to Oliver again because he was s promoting it a lot. Yeah, it's very a lot. And then the other day, Rick uh, from Helldeep, he sent me a, a SMS and with a picture with David Getter Instagram <laughs> sending Oliver, what is this track? I need this. <laughs> and now Oliver was replying, check your email, you already have it. <laughs> and yeah, David Getter was playing it on the uh, EDC Mexico, I guess. Oh, wow, cool. Yeah, oh, wow. Yeah. So uh, you did some other collabs as well uh, this year. Uh, can you tell a bit more about those? Yes, so um, so first track running well, running amazing, and uh, also with um, all the support from Emily Lenz uh, and uh, all the other guys from the techno scene, I was like, wow, this is amazing. I mean. Mm -hmm. Uh, David Getter playing it, uh, Emily Lenz is playing it. I mean, this is like David Getter super commercial, mm -hmm. Emily Lenz super underground techno, yeah, yeah? and everybody's playing it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was like wow. And um, but but still, the confidence was like ah, track by my own. I don't know. 
And then I spoke with uh, my old friend uh, Frank Elrich, who, who I, which I start ACES in 1995 together with him. <laughs> and um, so the story behind ACES, you want to hear it? Mm -hmm. Okay, we, we we've been to the to the whole uh, same facility, uh, and uh, he was my studio partner. He was just in the next studio next to me, uh, in 1995. And this was, I think, uh, after Lane. I went to this guy who uh, had this acetate the record, and he said, I have a place where you can make your studio in. So, okay, I went there, and there was this other strange guy next to me, which was Frank Ehrlich. And every day I came to the studio, he was like doing nice stuff, but he never released something. Mm -hmm. And one day I say, hey, let's do a track together. And then you finally release something. <laughs> <laughs> and because I was like, I don't know, but I was like, I have the feeling like I was doing one track every week. I was just putting out stuff mm -hmm. like crazy. And then we make this uh, first Aces record together. And uh, then we make another Aces record together. And after I started Tracer Tracks, I was saying, hey, you want to come and do some stuck stuff with me on Tracer Tracks? And we had, so we have a huge long story together. Mm -hmm. And actually, uh, he had a huge hit last year with uh, the asset, which was uh, B-Port number one for mm -hmm. several weeks and uh, played by all the big techno artists. And uh, he was a bit like, mm, Kai, now I have building my own career, career after you stopped Tracer Tracks and uh, leave me alone in this music business. And he was like, mm, I don't know. But uh, then he saw, oh, okay, with DT64, it's also uh, getting uh, good stuff. Maybe it was would be good to do a co collaboration again. Yeah. And so we did uh, the track together and um, uh, I we was thinking about to bring more uh, old uh, Frankfurt music mm -hmm. into the scene again. And um, yeah, freedom of expression was uh, the thing I had in my, in yes. my hand, had and I was like, let's do this. And we asked Tom Wax, who was uh, one of the original producers at the time, and he said, yeah, let's do this, guys. So we made the track together. Yeah. And actually now it's, it's become bigger and bigger again because uh, what we need now, mm -hmm. freedom of expression. Yeah, 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 exactly. We was never thought about this, but yeah. now with Corona and everybody wants to... It's perfect timing. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's like, it's the best timing for the yeah. track, yes. Yeah. So, and uh, are there any more collabs in the works? Yes, then uh, I came back to the scene and uh, people ask again to, to, uh, to me to DJ, to DJ tracks and I checked uh, all the B-Port staff and all the artists and I found this one guy with uh, who called Ramon Tapia with uh, Last Step and I was like, wow, that's a big track. It's a very nice track. Because actually what I found out is um, in the techno scene, there's a lot of tracks which are more similar what kind of trends I like but they call it techno, mm -hmm. interesting wise. But it's med melodic electronic music uh, with these goosebumps. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I feel more home there. And uh, so uh, I write him and say, hey, come on, that's a huge track you made. And he said, wow, that's amazing. I remember you. I play your old tracks all the time. <laughs> and. Uh, Actually, it's very funny because I, I wrote uh, a lot of techno artists and make them compliments to their new tracks and they were always like, wow, I remember you. You were the hero of my youth. Mm -hmm. and it was, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, it must be cool to hear, right? <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Even a very big artist was uh, replying like this and um, I said, wow, that's amazing. I never uh, thought I made a, such a big impact yeah. for people. And, and it's good for your self-confidence. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And um, so, 
uh, Ramon say, hey, wh wh why we don't do make a track together? I say, yeah, let's do this. <laughs> so we make this free of free state, which is now uh, still now uh, very uh, doing well and the Beatport techno charts yeah. again. Ah, cool. And uh, any solo works? Yeah, so uh, I was discussing this with my friend Frank uh, Elrich from ACES and he said, Kai, it's time to do a solo track. You, you should now have the confidence to do it. And I say, okay, let's do this. So this is in my head. Uh, the next record will be a solo record. Okay. But um, the, the only thought about now is where to release it. Uh, I some kind of like I want to have uh, rebuild and restart treasure tracks again but um, I also know it's it's a lot of work it's not like back in the 90s I mean we we have we even have an office for treasure tracks. Mm -hmm. we're just releasing the stuff I mean there was Armin Jonat my partner who did all the uh, writing the, the the loyalty stuff you know the contracts and distribution deals yeah. and everything and it was me like saying we need this track on Tracer Tracks yes and how we did, uh, get uh, Henderson called how mm -hmm. we get uh, Thomas P. Heckman over there and all the guys I mean and that was it we have no we, ha we even have an apartment for Tracer Tracks mm -hmm. that was <laughs> I mean we just made it, you yeah. know, and today it's so much work, it's so much uh, power you need for the promotion yeah. because so many tracks came out. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. In the 90s, you have, to, I mean, you have to invest a lot of money to get the vinyls out. And now it's just push the button and then the MP3s yeah. on Beatport uh, and everything else and mm -hmm. Spotify and where you want. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, it's it's a huge difference. Yeah, true. Um, I also heard you're working on an album. Yes, since nineteen uh, since two thousand four. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so the problem is, I have so many tracks on my computer, but I'm such a perfect uh, perfectionist. Yeah. And. Um, I mean, Mokwai can tell you stories about this. <laughs> Rama Tabia can you tell you stories. And also Frank can tell you a story about this. But um, I was discussing about uh, Frank uh, about this and he Frank say, Hey Kai, I'm so happy that you're pushing me always like this. Because then we have a good track at the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. And if you ask Ramon Tapia, he, he was going through a hard time with me because I was like, no, Ramon, we can't do this like this. No, there's no way. He said, but, 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 but no, we can't do this. So uh, it's very hard to work for me. <laughs> These guys realize it. And, uh, but um, I have the same stuff with my own stuff. Yeah. Yeah, if I'm making a track and I'm not 100% sure and not 100% happy, I won't release it. Yeah. And uh, Frank told me, hey Kai, most of the stuff you're doing, if you will release it, will be top 10 B port. Even if you're not happy with it. <laughs> but cause, because it's a great track. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, but I'm not 100% happy <laughs> with it. <laughs> yeah, th I think this is the, the biggest problem for me. Yeah. Yeah. When I was young in 1995, as I, I told you, I was releasing so many tracks yeah, without mm -hmm. thinking about. And now it's, it's uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm the, and the biggest enemy for myself yeah. to releasing tracks. Okay, so that will be an album, but no, no, not sure when. <laughs> yes, and now with Corona, I mean, it, yeah. it's it's a big problem, you yeah. know, because uh, I was investing last year. I, I'm not complaining, mm -hmm. yes, but I investing last year a lot of money to get the U.S. visa, working visa, and we have so many bookings for 220. I mean, EDC Las Vegas uh, was on my booking uh, schedule and it's all cancelled yeah and it's it's such a frustrating stuff you know if you uh, um, if you saying okay i will do the second try uh, to get back to the business mm -hmm. and then everything is cancelled mm -hmm. and i don't know if the, most of the people know it but today um the, the most income you get is 
to playing records yeah, to DJ. Yeah, from gigs. Yeah, it was, it was the other way around, like in, the, in the 90s. No, it was like 50-50, because yeah. I was selling a lot of records. I was really lucky with all the music, movie videos. I mean, just to give you an example, for for Life is Too Short, we sold about 50,000 CDs which cost about, I don't know, 12 euros or mm -hmm. something like that, yeah. in the first week, yeah. in one week. That's insane. It's insane. Yeah. yeah. To get into top 10 B port, you need about 150 uh, uh, sales. Yeah. sales. Yeah, it's completely a completely different it's, world. It's, it's a different yeah. world, yeah. yeah, and you get nothing from it. Yeah, that's yeah. also true. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for, for Spotify, I don't know the correct number, but it's like, for every play you get 0.003 yeah, cent, yeah. cent is, 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 is nothing. Yeah, no, that's yeah. true. For one, for one play. Yeah. So even if you have one million plays, it's like... Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's crazy. So you're active in the music scene for a long time already. Um, is there still something on your bucket list music-wise? Uh, there was a lot of stuff on my bucket list uh, music-wise, but uh, I gave it up and... Uh, uh, at the moment, I just know that with every track I'm releasing, I want to be 100% happy and 100% standing behind it. Yeah. And we made it this year, and um, and that's all. Okay. I just want to have fun. I want to have a good time. Uh, um, there is no goal like. Uh, getting a gold record or something else yeah. it's just like having a good time because if you get older <laughs> i'm older now uh, you also realize that a lot of stuff that in your young 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 uh, age or in your youth you were thinking it's important mm -hmm. it's not yeah that's very true yeah. i mean of course you you saw it i live in a nice area i have a nice view i live in a nice house I have a nice family this is very important yeah. the family i'm a happy father now this is amazing yeah. uh, but all the other stuff uh having fancy cars uh, all this stuff else yeah it's nice to have mm -hmm. but it's it's not making you happy yeah that's true okay and the last question pineapple on pizza yes or no pun pineapple on pizza yes or no oh whew. uh i like spicy pizza okay. so it's not for me Okay, well, thank you very much for your time. Good luck yes. with everything. Thanks. All right, that was it. This week's vlog, my interview with Kai Trasit with the story behind your own reality. Kai, thank you very much for your time. Much appreciated. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the vlog. If you did, make sure to give this video a like, leave a comment in the comment section below, and very important, make sure to subscribe. Also make sure to click the bell button, because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. I did two other interviews with Kai as well. Uh, in one of the interviews we're gonna talk about the track uh, Life is Too Short, and in the other interview I spoke with him about the story behind his classic Trends and Acid. Those will be online very soon as well. Once again, thanks for watching, and until next time, bye bye.